Now, this is taking cultural appropriation to a whole new level. You think Americans know how to culturally appropriate? Man, this is how it's done. The Korean man knows how to culturally appropriate like a boss. And what's interesting about it is that you may be in the West and you're hearing articles like this. And you may think that either there is no way that this can happen, so you don't believe the article. Or number two, you do believe the article, but you think that the people in North Korea are just silly. Like, how can they believe something like this? How can so many people, millions of people, believe something like this when presented to them? And the sad answer to this is that exactly what is happening here happened to my country. Exactly the same type of lies, exactly the same type of manipulation happened in Romania. So if it happened in my country, it can happen in your country as well. There is nothing in the ground or the water or the air of North Korea which can get people to believe this nonsense. It's not something genetic. It's something that every country on earth starts being free. And then when you have dictators and authoritarians, that's when people are forced to believe complete nonsense. And in order to understand why people can believe this thing, well, first of all, take into account that the press in North Korea is working hand in hand with the government. So the press is like the PR arm of the government. So if the government tells something, the press will parrot it. The press does not question the government. It never goes against the government. Again, it's like the PR lady from a corporation. The PR lady from Microsoft is never going to criticize Microsoft. She's never going to hold the CEO of Microsoft accountable. So the only place that people get their information, get their fact-checked information, is from the government. And the government is very careful to make sure there is no harmful misinformation that passes through. So, for example, if you were to say that someone else invented the burrito, well, that is dangerous misinformation because you're accusing the government of lying. You're a dangerous person. So people cannot know the truth because the only place they get their information is from the government. And in North Korea, people aren't allowed to leave. So they can't go to Russia and find out other type of information from Russia. So as such, if the only information you're getting is from one source, you literally cannot fact check it. Like these people literally cannot tell whether or not Kim Jong-un's dad invented the burrito. Now, maybe some people do know because there are a couple of people that under certain circumstances might have left the nation or maybe they have managed to figure out that this is a lie okay well what's next congratulations you know uh, if you tell it to other people you get in trouble so the worst thing that these authoritarian regimes do to you the worst thing they violate a person is not just because they get you to believe lies but they also get you to repeat those lies and and I, i'm telling you you don't feel as violated as when you know that something is false and you have to tell it to another person. It is so disgusting when it does that to you. And you need to do it because otherwise the punishment can be severe. Recently, for example, a couple of people in North Korea were executed because they have watched Squid Game. Now, it's interesting because the official announcement from North Korea on Twitter, because yes, their officials do have a Twitter account. If you're a citizen, you can't have a Twitter account, but their officials do, because the government is literally above the people. No one is there to hold the government to account. And they said that the uh, Squid Game is a very excellent critique of capitalism, and it's really great because it critiques South Korea. So why would they be upset if a citizen watches a critique of capitalism? Because at the end of the day, North Korea calls itself a communist nation. And the reason is because if the average citizen sees Squid Game, it also sees how life is in South Korea. Outside of those games, you do have like people walking on the streets of uh, South Korea and you do have like the society of South Korea. And they will notice that the South Korean society is actually much better than the society they live in. And then they may hold the government to account. Like, why are those people free? Why are those people uh, living a better life? Even when they're complaining, like even when that guy is on the street, you see so many commercials and open stores and so many things to buy. So, yeah, sure, it's a critique of capitalism. But even 
capitalism at its worst, when it's being critiqued in a movie, is still a lot better than what we have here. So if people watch that, the communists in Romania would call it a moral contagion. So their brain is now, because again, like they worked hand in hand with psychiatrists as well, with the experts in order to judge the human psyche. So a person that thinks capitalism is better than communism is actually suffering from a mental illness. So now that person can morally contagion other people, uh, morally is morally contagious to other people. So those other people will spread the news. So you need to stop that. And that's why North Korea cracked down so heavily on people who were trafficking movies from South Korea. They literally cannot allow, because like the, the whole system, you know, you look at a system like North Korea and it's a system where wealth inequality is astonishing. And you wonder like who benefits? And the answer is like the party members, they benefit so much. The whole system is designed to make the party members wealthy, to, to make them above Man, it's, it's kind of like a modern kingdom, if you will, where you have the aristocrats and uh, the upper echelons living the life in, in this uh, hellhole, which is an abject poverty place and, and a horrible place. No one wants to go there. Like, I, I don't know a single person who says, you know what, I want to go to North Korea and start a family. So objectively speaking, people do not go to North Korea because they like it. And the whole system is just made so that the people at the top can prosper. And everyone else is being used like a resource. They're like a cog in a machine. And they just do the bidding of the government. And you read news like this and it's hilarious. But for the people living there, it's not hilarious. It's horrifying because this is just another lie. It's just another thing that they have to repeat. It's just another thing they have to pretend that is true. And some people don't know it, but I'm pretty sure the elderly people uh, who probably heard from their parents and, and they might know where the burrito comes from. It's not funny to them and they have to constantly lie. And again, this is just one more lie. I mean, the government is so confident in its ability to lie to people and force people to repeat its propaganda that they're going to lie even with trivial stuff like a burrito. And the government doesn't gain anything from making this lie. But they do it because they can. It's a show of strength. It's a display of power. Like, they can do this to you, you're going to repeat it, because there's nothing you're going to do about it. And again, uh, the moral of the story is that just because it's happening in North Korea doesn't mean it can't happen in other countries. No matter how free your country is, it doesn't mean it can't happen there as well. Because North Korea used to be free at one point, and you can see the startling difference between North Korea and South Korea. So it's not genetic, it's not because of the land, it's not because of the air or the water. It's uh, how historians like to say people deserve the governments that they have. And in the case of North Korea, they're, they're putting up with it. So they're going to get more of it. And unfortunately, there's nothing they can do. Hopefully, maybe, just maybe, I will manage to live a long life in order to see a day when the people of North Korea are going to be truly free. And then we're going to get some really horror, uh, some really interesting horror stories coming up from um, the survivors. And you already get them if you go on TED Talk and you listen to people who fled North Korea. You're you're going to hear a lot of these, just some of the most harrowing stories that the human mind is almost incapable of imagining. And I think it's because you don't need an imagination. They're real. They actually happen. So. Listen to some of these uh, stories if you have time. Just uh, you can go on YouTube and you can see like a person who escaped North Korea speaks out. Like do, do searches like that. And there, there's many people. There's dozens of people that uh, managed to escape, and they tell you the stories. And I know they're true because they happened in Romania. So the reason for it is that the dear leader Ceausescu had a visit in North Korea back in the day. And he actually borrowed a lot of the things from there into the country, especially the cult of personality of the great dictator. And uh, my God, it it's, it's triggers me. It really does. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.